Hi guys, this is Growing Wealth. In today's video, I'm going to share with you an advanced bull put spread risk management strategy that you can use to win almost all, if not all, of your bull put spread trades. The whole of 2021, I have been very focused in trading the bull put spread strategy and it has worked out very well for me. In fact, this is my trading journal and from the start of the year, I have been employing this strategy already. And over the course of the year, you can see I have placed a total of 55 trades and that averaged out to about one trade, one bull put spread every week. And out of all my trades that I've placed, all of them have been winning except for one of it, which is Alibaba. In fact, if I want to drag this on long enough, eventually Alibaba will turn into a winning trade as well. But I decided to cut it off over there at a loss of 2.3 thousand. Except for this, every other trade has been profitable. And you can check over the PNL column over here to look at the profitability of the trade. Now, if you are interested, take a pause over here and slowly analyze each of these trades, how I've executed them and any specifics that you are interested in. And here, look at the stocks that I executed this strategy on. So most of the stocks that I execute my bull put spreads on are fundamentally strong companies that have been performing very well. They have been earning money. They have been growing consistently for the past five years with positive cash flow and whatnot. So the selection of all these stocks make the strategy even more profitable. Before I go in depth into the advanced risk management strategy, I'll first like to go through quickly the basics of the bull put spread strategy first. In fact, if your guys are interested in a much more detailed explanation, I would suggest you to go back to my two part bull put spread strategy video that I've uploaded earlier. Over there, I've explained everything in details from how to enter how much to enter, when to exit, and so on and so forth. The links to those videos will be in the description below. And for today, let's, use, let's base our example on Facebook or Meta platforms. So in order to initiate a bull put spread trade, first we want to sell a put that is about 25 delta or 0.25 delta away from the current price. Current price right now is at 324. So over the delta column, we can see the strike price that we are interested in is the 300 strike price over here. We are going to sell this and then we are going to buy back another put at a lower strike as a reinsurance to protect our short put. So overall, this trade, we can see it nets us a credit of $0.97, cents, which translates to about $97. So now we go on quickly to analyze the trade. And this is the risk profile of the trade that we have entered. If you focus on this box over here, max loss is at $403. So around $400. And in my in-depth bull put spread strategy video, I've explained that we never want to reach max loss. In fact, we want to exit when the trade is at 20% of max loss. So for a trade with a max loss of $400, we want to exit when it reaches about a loss of $80. So as you can see on the purple number, at $80, this corresponds to a stock price of $306. Meaning to say if Facebook hit $306, we will exit the trade at a loss of $80 per contract. This $80 or 20% of a max loss should correspond to 2% of your total account size. So let's say if you are holding, if you are trading an account of $20,000, 2% of your account size will be $400. In other words, you have to scale up this trade, take on more trades, such that when it reaches 20% of max loss, it equates to 400, which is 2% of your account size. So in order to reach that, you just have to take on five trades. And then at 20%, which is 306, 20% max loss, you'll, sit, you'll be at $400, which is 2% of your account. And basically, that is the gist of what we have covered in the in-depth bull put spread strategy video that I've uploaded earlier on. Now, over my last one and a half years trading the bull put spread strategy, after taking on 60 over trades, I find that most of the time, taking a loss on the bull put spread strategy is rather unnecessary, especially so if we are trading your bull put spreads on fundamentally strong stocks, 
like Facebook in this example. Because if we go over to the chart, just look at the long-term performance of this chart. Overall, it is on a general uptrend. And any dips that we face or any corrections that we face is rather short-lived and temporary. In other words, if your bull put spreads gets into the money and you are faced with a loss, it should also be temporary. And if we can manage to drag on the trade or manage the trade in such a way that we drag it out until the stock price goes back up into an uptrend again, we could potentially mitigate the loss and turn the loss into a winning trade. And that is what I'm going to share with you guys in today's video, an advanced strategy to manage losing bull put spread trade. So in this advanced risk management style, we are not going to take a loss. In fact, we are just going to let the trade continue on running. Even if it hits max loss, we are still going to be in the trade until the very day of the expiration. And in fact, I have a real life example to show you guys right now. So I have a bull put spread on Facebook expiring on the 23rd of December. And this bull put spread is based on a strike of 330 and 325. Currently, it is at a loss of $1,000. And I've just left it to run without cutting loss, without exiting the trade. Based on my risk management style, I should have gotten out of this trade when the loss is at a negative 600. How I am going to manage this trade will be as such. Now let's suppose that today is the 23rd of December. Today is the last day of the trade. And the, currently the stock price is at 323. What this means is that our 330, 325 bull put spread on Facebook is going to expire in the money. It is going to get assigned and we do not want that. So what are we going to do? Basically, we need to buy back our 23rd December 330 and 325 spread. So let's go ahead, click on buy here and then sell here. To buy back this, I'll need to pay $2.90 per contract. And this is definitely a loss for me because when I enter the trade, at most I've collected 80 or 90 cents in terms of credit. So what we are going to do is to roll this out. We are not going to admit our losses here. Whatever we pay here, $2 or $3 over here, we are going to collect back even more. Now, similarly, we are going to select a day to expiration that is 30 days away. And then we are going to sell another bull put spread. So this is this action over here is known as rolling. I'm going to roll the 330 strike out into the 320. So I'm going to sell another 320. And then as an insurance, I'm going to buy back the 310. So notice the difference here. Initially, we have opened a 330 and 325 bull put spread. The difference between these two strike price is $5. In other words, this is a $5 spread. What we have done over here is to widen out the spread of our bull put spread. Now, currently, it is a $10 spread. 320 minus 310, that gives you a difference of $10. Right now, our max loss per contract is sitting at $1,000 instead of previously $500. Now, if you roll it out this way, you can see that we get to collect an additional 65 cents of credit for another 30 days. So essentially, what we have done is to extend our losing trade, drag it out another 30 days, lowering our strike price, and in turn, still collect more credit. By lowering the strike price to 320 and 310, even though we have increased our max loss from 500 to $1,000 per contract, we have lowered our short strike from 330 to 320. What this means is that the new bull put spread is going to expire much more easily. So 320 is over here as opposed to our original short strike of 330. We do not even need the stock price to go back up to 330 to let the trade expire worthless. All it needs to do now is to maintain and stay within 320. All right, so this is one trick that I use to extend and delay taking loss on my bull put spreads and turn a losing trade into an eventual winner. And to further highlight and illustrate to you guys the usefulness of this risk management, I have another Facebook bull put spread that was in the money previously. And I've rolled it out into the 31st December expiry 290, 280 strike. And currently it is well out of the money. And in about two weeks time, it is going to expire worthless and I'm going to collect all the premium that I have collected. 
now let's take a quick look at the specifics of this trade. I've initially entered this 305, 300 strike Facebook bull put spread on the 29th of October with an expiry on the 3rd of December. And that is roughly about 35 days to expiration. Now, so when I enter the trade, I've collected a dollar and five cents. But let's look at what happened after I entered the trade. I've entered the trade on the 29th of December, which is this candle over here. Back then, I was still thinking prices have already dropped down to the 200 moving average, pierced it a little bit, and then show a bounce. I thought prices should have been supported, and this should be a good place to place a bull put spread on Facebook, especially after since this huge drop over here that corresponds to a 20% drop from the high. And so I went ahead to take on a bull put spread with the short strike of 305 and then a long strike at 300, thinking that. Well, 305 short strike is well below the low of the of this dip over here. So it should be quite safe. But who knows? On the 3rd of December, but who knows? On the 3rd of December, prices decided to make another low, threatening my bull put spread at 305 and 300. Therefore, I've decided to further roll it out into the 290, 280 strike, widening the spread from $5 to now $10. But at the same time, collected more premium. I've exited at 142 and then I've re-entered at 227. So essentially I've collected another 60 over cents in terms of premium per contract and at the same time lowered my short strike from 305 to 209. All right, so this is the new short strike and a long strike of my bull put spread. After that day, prices just went up and then my bull put spread were back in business. In fact, they are not being threatened anymore and that previous losing trade has now turned into a profitable one. Now, in case if you are wondering what happens if the bull put spread is deeper in the money, could this strategy still work? Now, let's head back to the earlier bull put spread that we have running. So this 330, 325 strike bull put spread. Now, let's say instead of 330 and 325, now we have it deeper in the money at, for example, let's say 350 and 345. So I need to now buy back my 350 strike and sell away my 345. Now this, to close out this trade, I need to pay $4.98, almost close to like $5 already, which is the max loss of a trade. Now, can we apply the same strategy or same risk management style? Now let's head on to 32 days out and then roll it out. So for 350, for 350 short strike, let's roll it into the 340 first. We are going to sell the 340 and then we are going to buy back the 330, widening our spread by $5. And you can see by doing such a rolling strategy, we can still collect $1.32 in terms of credit. So the same style of management works, but at 340 short strike, this whole trade this whole trade will still be in the money compared to the current stock price at 323. You will still need the stock price to rise up a little bit to hit 340 in 32 days time before this trade will expire out of the money. Now, what happens if we lower it further? Can we do that? If we roll it out into the 330 and 320 strike, right now we are collecting only 10 cents of credit per contract. So. For a scenario like this, it really boils down to your own risk appetite and also how much you believe in the strength of the stock. Now, if you are more risk adverse, you could lower it to 330 and 320. In such a case, you forego the additional premium that you collect. But in exchange, this new trade, 330 and 320, gets to expire much more easily. Prices only have to rise up by $7 before it expires out of the money in 32 days time. But if you believe strongly in this underlying stock, for example, in this case, Facebook, then you might want to go to the 3, 340 and 330. Collect more credit and at the same time, lowering the short strike by a little bit so that the trade gets out of the money much easier. Or if you are even more aggressive, you can do the same Continue selling 350 and 340. And in this case, you will be collecting $2.57. But personally, I will not choose such an aggressive method. I'll just aim for a credit of about 80 to 90 cents, which is what I use to collect when I open a new trade. If that strike can hit that amount, 
I will be more than happy to take it. And in this case, it will be somewhere like 335 and 325. So I'll be collecting 60 cents, although slightly lower, but my trade gets to expire out of the money much more easier now compared to a 340 short track. All right, so with that, I hope everything has been clear. And if so, do remember to support the video and channel by leaving a like and subscribe to the channel. The next thing I would like to go through very quickly is how many trades should you take on with this advanced risk management style. Going back to my trading journal, currently with my 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 running blue put spreads on 2 on Facebook and 3 on the queues, the total capital requirement for all of this trade is sitting at 18,000. My account size is sitting at 54.6 thousand right now. So a rule of thumb would be to not let your total block capital or capital requirement hit 50% of your net liquidity or your account size. In this sense, if you have an account size of 54,000, your total block capital or capital requirement should not exceed 27,000. Why is that so? This is to give yourself room to manage the trade. Because every time when you need to manage the trade using this style of management, you're essentially doubling your block capital. If you take a look at my earlier example, the Facebook bull put spread at 305 and 300 strike. Because this is a $5 spread, each contract will require a capital requirement of $500. In other words, they will block out $500 in your capital. And since I'm taking on six contract at one go, Essentially, this is 500 times 6, which amounts to 3,000 in capital requirement or block capital. Now, when this gets into the money and I need to roll it out and widen the spread from 305, 300, a $5 spread to now 290 and 280, a $10 spread, essentially, my block capital has increased from five times 500 times 6 to now 1,000 times 6. So from 3,000 to now 6,000. Essentially, you can see why we want to only allow a maximum of 50% block capital as opposed to your net asset valuation or your account size. This is such that if you are in a super unlucky situation where you enter all your trade at the top of the stock prices and all of your trades get into the money at the same time, you still have room for yourself to roll out all your trades and double their spread. In my case, it will be from 3,000 to 6,000. A total of 18,000, it will roll out into 36,000. And even if such a scenario happens, I'll still be well below my account size. So I have 54.9,000, 36,000 in terms of maintenance is would not be that much of a big deal. And I still have room to take on more trades if necessary. All right, so I hope everything is clear with this new advanced risk management style for the VooPoot spread strategy. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments below and I'll be sure to help you out as much as I can. If you're interested in how this Facebook 330, 325 VooPoot spread will turn out, then stay tuned and subscribe to the channel because if this gets into the money, I'll do a live management of this trade and record it and upload it for you guys to see. And hopefully that example will serve to clarify everything for you. With that, we have come to the end of the video. I hope you guys have enjoyed the content so far. And if you guys would like to have a more in-depth discussion with me and the other community members, then I invite you guys to join our free Growing Wealth Telegram community chat group. Once again, do remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. With that, I'll catch you in the next video. Goodbye.